Although we suspect that the causes of recurrent implantation failure may be different than those for recurrent pregnancy loss, we do approach them in a similar fashion, although there are exceptions. In both cases, we worry about a variety of different factors that can affect a successful reproduction. One is we want to always make sure that we look at the uterus itself. We want to make sure that it's a healthy uterus, that it's free of any abnormal lesions like polyps or fibroids or scar tissue or glandular development into the walls of the uterus that can cause failed implantation or failed pregnancy. We also want to look at factors like autoimmune factors. We want to make sure there are no antibodies circulating throughout the blood or within the uterine cavity that can be attacking a developing pregnancy. We want to make sure that there's no abnormal clotting factors. We want to make sure uh, that the chromosomes for the embryos are in fact normal chromosomes because most pregnancy losses and implantation failure possibly may be due to uh, chromosome abnormality. We want to make sure that there are no major hormonal aberrations, that the thyroid function is normal, that there's no evidence of diabetes or impaired glucose tolerance. There's a variety of factors that can cause pregnancy loss and there's a variety of factors that may contribute to implantation failure. There's also a lot of mysterious factors that we have not yet identified. We would work very, very hard with our medical team, our scientific team, with the genetics team at Mount Sinai, which is world renowned, and we're able to really put together an evidence-based approach that allows us to evaluate as many factors as possible and also to be able to contribute to the scientific literature by doing our own studies to determine what the causes of failed reproductive success are.